Welcome to Field of Jokes, where comedians break down sports films, and we give you our uncensored hot takes. Boom. Yes, back with the producer, the vision of the show, the mind, the guy who's the, you're the Toontown guy. The ones and twos. Here the, we go, baby. The ones and twos, Joshua Boyle, and we're covering a great movie, Space Jam, which is a kid's movie starring a gambling addict, and the theme song is written by a convicted sex trafficker. Shout out to R. Kelly. Yes, we did not know this at the time, guys. Everything was hunky dory back then. Was it "I Wish You Could Fly"? Is that the theme song? Ironically, yes. I wish I could fly. I wish even could... though he was keeping all his victims in cages. Yeah, they wish they could fly away to happiness. And mm. well, it's a sad day. But luckily, he's luckily he's not in the movie. Though. Yeah, it's luckily good. that's not a conflict within the movie. No, but we got legendary Hall of Famer, Washington Wizards legend Michael Jordan. <laughs> That's what the star of the movie here, and uh, no, I, I, hey, this movie's a classic, it, it, it's timeless, and uh, basically what we started off with, it's uh, basically Michael Jordan has to go to what Looney Town. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the most diversified sports movies in all times. Not only do they have a black lead character, but they have a bunny supporting role. Yeah, they have Daffy Duck. It's cartoons. They got Bill Murray. They got Larry Bird playing himself. Oh yeah, I pretty much every every NBA player. Yeah, they're. Uh, this is highly diversified. Yeah, like this is kind of like uh, was it Ro- Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but with NBA. Exactly. Other than Lola, Lola Bunny. Lola Bunny. Yeah, Lola Bunny. You see, nowadays kids, as we know, like Space Jam Two, she caused Little some controversy. Yes, because she had breasts. And uh, this Lola Bunny, this is the before woke culture. This was in the mid '90s. Has My some, Lola has breasts. Has some sex on her. Mm, she got. Oh, she thick, son. <laughs> she thick. You see that booty? Oh yeah. What's this Lola now? Doesn't she like wear uh, like a like a shoes? Shoes. She wears shoes. Yes. Well, what, how did she cover up her look? I'm just curious. I, for, I think she's wearing a t-shirt. T-shirt. Yeah, we can't show curves on that one. Here, let me get the stopwatch going. Yeah, yeah. Lola's looking good, and we got some canceled characters. We got Pepe Le Pew. Mm-hmm. Oh uh, no, I, I like Looney Tunes. I know it's kind of like a, as a, some of those cartoons are a little outdated. You say a little racism, racism in them, but they're still kind of funny. Like, uh, what do you call it? Speedy Gonzalez? Oh yeah, yeah. Pepe Le Pew, who's a, just a stinky Frenchman rapist. <laughs> so it's uh, but he makes an appearance in this, but he's very well behaved. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't do anything. Anything else? No, no, he he behaves himself. I'm really proud of him. Yeah, he kept it together. Uh, unfortunately, kept it in his pants. Yes, he did. Kept it in his pants or his fur, and uh, the, well, luckily the cat wasn't there that he was always chasing. True story. But yes, it's hey, this is, takes place in the golden era of NBA. In my opinion, '90s NBA. '90s NBA, yeah, Whoa. the dream team. Dream team. Uh, what they play against the scream team in this one. Yeah, yeah, but no, it's a good mix of cartoons, and we got celebrities. We don't see their faces. We got Danny DeVito. As the oh, as the bad guy, yeah. yeah, Looked it up because it did sound like uh, Frank Reynolds. I'm like, that is Devito. You know, right away when you see the bad guy on Moron Mountain, you're just like, yes, that voice is so familiar. Oh, it's perfect, motherfucking Devito. That's right. He's in the oh, we don't see him in the flesh. We got that golden voice, that angry uh, voice. But yes, it takes place on. (laughs) I love that Moron Mountain, which is a county in Alabama, Mm -hmm. and uh, no Moron Mountain. It's like a was it a, a theme park he owns, right? Yeah, it's like the Six Flags of Mars. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Danny DeVito, this is the cartoon. Uh, yeah, he has a theme park that's very depressing and psychotic. Just You get laser beams shot at this you. This alien theme park that we learn is having a hard time putting uh, people in seats. They have an attraction problem. Because people almost die on the rides, which <laughs> causes a problem. So he needs to get an attraction. And he goes to his TV back at uh, Nickelodeon in the 90s there and What's he find? Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. And he just has that million dollar idea where he's just like, yeah, yeah, this is going to bring in the cash. I need Looney. I need Looney. I need I need I need uh, a Jewish bunny rabbit. I need uh, a guy with a shotgun chasing a, a pig. And here's something interesting about the movie. You know, almost notice Elmer Fudd and, and uh, Porky Pig. They're like the same person. They look the same. <laughs> they did you do notice look that? a lot like. Yeah, I did. Uh, it's just the nose and the pants. The head. The head, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had the same round head and everything. They're both bald. They're both bald, yes, and uh, yeah, they look very similar. But yes, um, Space Jam. So he needs the attraction. He sends his little aliens who are kind of dumb, as we know, and they have to go to planet Earth. 
they basically just look like little pieces of diarrhea. They do. They do. <laughs> they are one of those uh, commercials where you have like toe fungus. Yeah, toe fungus. They're toe yeah. fungus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, I mean, they could, that could be part of the diarrhea too. <laughs> you never know. I've never been to Mars. so I have not either, but I have been never to been to Mar- 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 Mountain. Yes, <laughs> it's every day in my head, believe me. Um, <laughs> but no, but hey, they uh, – okay, so they're going to kidnap. So to yeah, to solve the first uh, – First conflict. crisis, yes. They've got to put some uh, attraction in Moron Mountain by stealing the Looney Tunes. Yes, so they go to Looney Town. Was it was it I, I'm, was it Looney Town? What they have? What they call it? I think it was like Looney Town. We just watched the movie, but it yeah, we just they pick up every detail. What do you want from me? Um, <laughs> Looney Town, yeah, Looney Town, yes. And uh, so he goes there, he kidnaps Bugs, and Bugs, he's giving them the hijinks. Mm-hmm. He's got the New York accent. Uh, he's tricking these idiots. Right. But before that, they actually, be, the scene before that that I love is they introduce Michael Jordan. Yes. As a kid. Oh, that's a very important part. Yes. Uh, growing up in North Carolina, shooting hoops. Mm-hmm. Middle of the night, his yep. dad comes out, who before that recently died. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a little kind of sad. It was, like, it was oh, definitely right. sad. But it was interesting because after watching the movie Air. Yeah, we which we did. We're like, where's his mom? We know his mom holds a big voice in that household. Why yeah. isn't she here? I think it was more of a, because it just, like I think recently happened where his dad was murdered. Uh, so I think I, this was around that time between his first retirement. So it's kind of like a tribute. Oh, okay, yeah. And we didn't know much about his mom until that movie Air anyways. Right. Yeah, this was kind of yeah. It was very sudden. I was I surprised because he they, they do the first retirement press conference. Yeah, I'm just glad my dad got to see me play. And I was like, man, this just happened like I think a year ago. Right. When it happened. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh no no it was no no I'm wrong. Maybe three years after he retired in it was 93. pretty close. Yeah yeah. So I was like, it was more of like a tribute to the, his dad. Yeah. But, but yeah. what did his dad say? Oh, it's that yeah. one line where he's like, where he's like, you can do anything you put your mind to, Michael. And that's the one line us millennials have been fed to for years. Uh, yeah, and I uh, at the time I heard it, and look what happens. Now you're doing a sports movie podcast where Michael Jordan's dad was the first guy to say it on TV to the masses. Just yeah, fucked up an entire generation. Yeah, him <laughs> and uh, Mr. Rogers. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. And I, I used to watch old Mr. Rogers, and no, things that have not turned out well. Uh, that's the alcoholism, but uh, right. more than anything. But yeah, yeah, he had. Hey, well, Michael, I love that scene. He's he's a little kid playing basketball, and he's telling his dad his whole career. I'm gonna go to North Carolina, then I'm gonna play in the NBA and get championships. Yeah, and he's making every shot too. <laughs> making every shot. It's like, boy, you you knew everything dot to dot. Because I know when you were a kid, you wanted to play baseball those days. Mm, I know Jordan's true. history. He didn't want to play the NBA, but it's funny. It makes you feel better. Yeah, or wear Nike. Nike, that's Ooh. right. Well, he won that. He won that Adidas. I know. Yes, but in the movie, he's wearing Converse. That's right. What oh. The f- Oh, yes. Oh, this movie has a lot of product placement. Jordan wasn't getting out of bed for Oh, free. my God. The no. product placement in this. Oh, McDonald's, Gatorade, it's all mentioned. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, but we'll get into that. There's like a great scene where, um, well, I'll tell the scene real quick, where he's in his hotel because he's playing baseball. This is when the Birmingham Barons, and he's in his, mo- it's a motel room. Jordan, we're not saying a motel. He's wearing gray sweatpants, no shirt, no body fat at all, looking fabulous. I'm not gay. And uh, he's eating a Big Mac and fries. Like, nobody looks like that. <laughs> I know. That was hilarious because you know you immediately go, oh, what is that, a Big Mac? Yeah. Oh, I could go for some McDonald's right now. It made it's me just, want it. Yeah, exactly. It made you hungry. It's just hilarious for the product placement in this movie. They knew exactly what they're doing. And Michael, yeah, he's like, I got to get some change on this too. Oh, they, they it was a Michael Jordan commercial. Great much. writing. Great yeah. writing. And guys, if you eat that much McDonald's, you won't have that torso like he did. He was right. That's right, ladies. Michael Jordan, gray sweatpants. We get Lola Bunny, ladies. Yeah. You get half naked Jordan. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, he's playing the Birmingham Barons, as we know. When he retired the first time, went to play baseball. But yeah, for the White Sox organization, didn't go so well. Whatever. But this is the thing. He's in the minor in some shitty ho dunk town, and. He's doing bad, but everybody's kissing his ass. Because mm-hmm. he's Michael Jordan from basketball. Like Even yeah. the catcher is like trying to cheat. He's tipping the pitch. He's like, hey, Jordan, swing at this one. Don't swing at this and one. And he still can't hit the ball. That's embarrassing, yeah. dog. That's Well, I mean, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, obviously it was a little corny, but uh, the catcher is like, hey, thanks for signing that ball for my kid. <laughs> I and Jordan, hey, no problem. Because if you know Michael Jordan, he'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, Yo, yeah. Most, the most competitive dude in the world. Yeah, he would not be, but you know, you don't want to do that for a kid's movie. No. Bad enough, our, our song is by a convicted sex trafficker. Yeah. Which is, but no, yeah, he goes and hey, we got one of my favorite people from the 90s. Wayne Knight was the PR guy. Uh, remember the PR guy, big guy? He was Newman and Seinfeld. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. Dude is funny, whatever he does. Hilarious. Yeah. Definitely the comedic relief of the movie in so many ways. Oh, yeah. He's, I mean, Seinfeld, he stole every scene he was in. He, he, he's great. We love, I love Newman, Wayne Knight, and he's a fun, yeah. He was the PR guy kissing Jordan's ass, and uh, he drove Jordan home from the game in his car that yeah, the door doesn't open. Yeah. <laughs> What's hilarious, that, that house, Jordan's house in the movie, um, you look it up on like Reddit, and it was like the same house that was move, uh, used in other movies too. Was it not even in Birmingham? It was probably in Pasadena. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It didn't look like that nice, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure Jordan. Well, I heard like the rumor was not actually it was true. He, when he played on the Birmingham Barons, he didn't want to ride in those crappy buses, so they got like a giant like fancy super bus. Because yeah, Jordan don't he doesn't travel like a minor leaguer. Uh, right. But, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, he comes home and his kids, uh, they're like, hey, dad, daddy. And those weren't his real kids. I think they had actors. I believe so, yeah. Because he has two twins. I think so, yeah. And one of his sons is... a set of twins. Yeah, one of his sons is engaged to, to Scotty Pippen. To Scotty Pippen's... Ooh. X. Yeah, yeah. Not Scotty Pippen. Oh, God. Not, oh, not man. <laughs> oh, man, that would have been... Oh, boy. I messed that up. Bad. I just got to fact check you every time, Jeff. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. that's a bad it's fact. Okay. Though we don't want that to spread. Yeah. <laughs> it might be worse going out with Scotty Pippen's ex than Scotty Pippen. Because, yeah, that's... that's uh, that's a Hey, things change in the future. <laughs> but, yeah, that was that. And he's playing with the kids. Uh, he's watching the news. And, hey, Jim Rome had a little guest appearance. The Rome of uh, the Jungle or whatever. And yeah, he's he's ripping Jordan for baseball. Uh huh. Man, I suck. Everybody's saying I'm bad. You know. <laughs> and uh, they're really nice about it, though. Yeah, they're nice about it. And he's nice That's about it. That's the worst part about it. If you've seen The Last Dance, uh, that documentary, you know he's not very nice about that stuff. <laughs> right. But it was right. funny. It's a kids' movie. Yeah. So then it goes from there. They immediately go back to Looney Tuneville. Yes. And they're like, uh, "This is when the we'll call we'll call them the Monstars." Oh, they come and make a threat. We're taking exactly. over. Exactly. Exactly. But thank God Bugs Bunny is witty and he thinks to himself, oh, we got to defend ourselves first. Yep. We got to play a little basketball against these little diarrhea turds. Yeah, those the toe fungus ad guys. Yeah, because they aren't going to score. They aren't going to score. They're little and they can't jump. Yep. And so Bugs goes, because, yeah, that was his thing. We're going to have to. And you can't just take us. I'm mean, you guys got to fight us, or we got to compete, or something. Uh, so it's a kids' movie, so there's no violence. Uh, well, actually, right, there yeah. is. There, there's more, <laughs> the, but it's funny violence. Um, yeah. So he plays basketball, and these these little guys, they're dumb, but not that dumb. They know enough to watch a movie on basketball and get uh-huh. inspired. Best yes. players in the world. It's one of those 1950s black and white movies. All white guys. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, when you shoot the basketball. Alley-oop. <laughs> yeah, it's like Hoosiers and stuff, and. Uh, yeah, so they go to an NBA game, and as a Phoenix Suns fan, like I said, the show's filmed in Phoenix, lifelong Suns fan, they go see the Knicks play the Suns. They go to the, the and typical little guys hiding behind a trench coat and a top hat on top yeah. of each other in a game. Uh, yeah, and they're playing. We get we get some old. Oh, this is why I, I, I fanboyed here. We got my, my favorite Phoenix Suns there, the 90s. Charles Barkley. Charles motherfucking Barkley. Danny Ainge, AC Green, Paul Westfall. Even had the Suns coach recently passed. He, yeah, he was coaching, and then they're playing the Knicks. So we get Charles Oakley, Patrick Ewing. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was the nineties, baby. The 90s. This is the this is the high. This is the golden era of the NBA where players played eighty two games. You know, that that rest. What's that shit? The load management bullshit. Uh, no, these guys played, and it was great. Yeah, Patrick Ewing. and They didn't see their family, nor did they want to. No, 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 especially Patrick Ewing, because he would go to the Gold Club, as I was telling you about. Uh, oh, snap a room. Yeah, where he went, him and Barkley, they all went there. and uh, Yeah, a lot of these guys, uh, which if you guys know the Gold Club, look it up. They had some fun. You know, it only makes sense. That's the golden era of basketball. They go to the Gold Club. It just... Perfect. Hand in hand. They're like, hey, I can't wait till we play in Atlanta. Oh, I can't wait we go to Atlanta. Coach, when we play in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, because I love the gold club. So did it Patrick Ewing. But uh, mm-hmm. so the little bug guys, the aliens, what they do? The they Monstars, meet. they uh, they go to the NBA game and they steal the talent. Yep. And it looks so weird. It's like uh, this slime yeah. from Ghostbusters or something. Yeah, they turned into like Just, a... Yeah, this ooze, you know what I mean? But nobody saw on the court. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. that's the hardest part, too, is you see the woman that's sitting next to the Monstars yeah. when they go to the game, like, freak out. 
Yeah, just, ah, I don't like these seats. Right. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. in, in like the real world, someone would freak the fuck out. Well, yeah, you see somebody large in a trench coat and sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, I, what the fuck's this guy doing? Yeah. Then, yeah. That would be the first red flag. They wouldn't even let you sit down like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's a cartoon. But so it's weird. a cartoon, so they get away with it. They it's get so away cute. with it. And then they steal the talent from Charles literally, Barkley. literally go in through this dude's mouth and nose and suck the talent right out of him. Yes, uh, and like their ex-wives who sucks the soul out of them, the the monster. Oh, they're not that fast. They're not that fast. No, but these guys, Barkley, he can't touch the ball or whatever. So they got. We know we got future Hall of Famer Charles Barkley. We're not gonna take AC Greens. But we'll just take Barkleys, and then they take Patrick Ewing. So oh. they suck the talent right out of them. They and they put it into a basketball. Yeah. Was it a Spalding? Spalding or something? Yeah. And then, uh, then they go around the NBA. Yeah. They they and they go they go to the Charlotte Hornets. They get Larry Johnson, Grandmama. You know they're really doing their homework because they also get Muggsy Bowes. Muggsy Bowes, which is one of the shortest people to ever play in the NBA, but also one of the best ball handlers and scorers out there. Oh yeah, I mean he was pretty he was pretty built too. And then uh, this I think the monsters. I was shocked they took this guy's Sean Bradley. Uh, yeah. Seven six. He seven. He played. He was a number one overall pick. He was a good player. But I mean, uh, if I had my pick of the litter, I don't know. I would go uh, Sean Bradley. I would probably uh, was Shaq in at the time. Yes, I'd go to Shaq. Well, um, it, it was almost like they had to have one like one white guy. Yeah, like we'll take it. <laughs> we'll take Sean Bradley. Yeah. Diversity, baby. <laughs> Diversity. Yeah, I, I would. Like I said, I would have gone Shaq. Maybe Alonzo Mourning. Because yeah, yeah, the Hornets. You had two Hornets in there: Muggsy Bogues and uh, Grandmama. Larry Johnson, but they're still good. I would still take this team. Uh, and I, like I said, I like uh, uh, Sean Bradley. So, yeah, so they take their talent and they get it into them. I know it sounds g- g- gross. Uh, <laughs> they get the talent into the basketball. Into the basketball, but these little monsters, they get inside them. Exactly. So now they have the power. They have the talent. And they're like, let's go back to Looney Tuneville and challenge these motherfuckers. And they got big. They got psychotically big. They're the monsters. As soon as they touch the, uh, as soon as they touch the basketball now, that has all the talent. They transform from uh, little fungus guys. Let's say um, diarrhea, toe jam to just full blown corona. Corona, right. yes. Oh, long COVID. We're talking just here. big old, oh, yeah. big old virus now. Tall oh. boys. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, they're do scary. some damage. <laughs> oh yeah, they're scary. And then so Bugs is like, oh shit, what do we do? What do we do? We're fucked. We're That's, fucked. Yeah, Bugs knows he's in trouble. But he's also witty again. So he's like, if we can just steal Michael Jordan. Yeah, let's not take his talent. Let's take all of Michael Jordan. Exactly. Exactly. Let's kidnap we MJ. We need more than just his talent. <laughs> yeah, we'll take. We'll just take the whole guy. And all right, they do. They find Michael Jordan. He's playing golf with Larry Bird and uh, Bill Murray. Bill Murray. That is who a, know who knew about that relationship. You know what I mean? I think he he's a big Chicago guy. So he's a big Chicago fan. So Indiana he, yeah. too. Yeah, like Midwest. Yeah, well, I know he's like big Cub guy. He's from Chicago, and he's like, oh, that's right. Okay, he, yeah. He, so he was big and all that. So that that made sense. But just seeing him being able to hang out with Larry Bird and Michael Jordan, yeah. If, well, that's if you're gonna, pretty cool. It's cool, but also if you know Jordan and you play golf with him, you got to have some money. So yeah, you got to want to bet. Yeah, I think they did make a bet. Whoever hits the closest gets dinner. It's like no, it'd probably be like eighty grand. Yeah, yeah it would be something. Kids movie. Kids yeah, movie. kids movie. Kids we got to be here. Yeah, yeah. He goes, we'll just go out to. I'll take you to McDonald's. No. Imagine if him and like uh, Keanu Reeves from Hardball ever met. <laughs> oh God! Oh Keanu! Oh he would be. Oh Keanu! Jordan, don't ever play golf with Keanu from Hardball. Yeah, that guy would have no, no, no. So yeah, that that threesome made sense. It was like okay, yeah, yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you have to have cash and uh, yeah. And we got a little funny scene where Bill Murray, because uh, all the players are getting sick, losing their talent. Well, he goes, maybe I could play in the NBA. He's like, Bill Murray. maybe the NBA needs me. This is the second coming. Yeah, Jordan goes, no. They don't. They don't. And he goes, is it because I'm white? Oh, yeah. He pulled the <laughs> my white card on Michael white. Jordan. Yeah, so it was very funny. I, I think today, I, fuck it, it's funny. And he did it. And he goes, he goes, no, that's not it. Larry's white. He goes, no, he's not white. He's clear. I know. I, didn't, <laughs> I, uh, I guess uh, you had to get a, something out of it. But Larry does have ice in his veins, though, man. I mean. When he's on the, yeah, when it's fourth quarter, he does got ice in his veins. Man, cold motherfucker. Talk like, some shit. Yeah, he's he just, yeah, he, he's, yeah, he doesn't cave to the pressure. He stays cold. Uh, yeah, Sun doesn't beat him down. But yeah, Larry Legend and the, 
So there you go. Jordan gets a hole in one because Bugs has a magnet. Always the classic magnet, horse shape, horseshoe shaped. Mm-hmm. Gets the ball into the hole in one. Jordan gets it. Boom. Goes to Toonville. Goes to Toonville. Gets sucked right down. Golf apparel and all. Yeah. His Peaky Blinders hat fell off everything. And uh, yeah, he's in Toontown. Like, whoa, what the hell? You're not real. And Bugs Bunny, to prove that he's real, of all the things a, a cartoon could do, he decides to kiss Jordan on the lips. <laughs> Classic, uh, yeah. There's no other way to prove, right? Yeah, it's like, Jordan, like we can do, they do the, all the crazy stuff after. Like put him in a spinning crazy chair and bounce him up and down. It's like, Bugs, if you're going to kiss me, dress up as the lady. You know, when Bugs uh, used to dress, yeah. when Bugs would have the blonde wig and the lipstick. Remember in Wayne's World, he goes, you ever see a Bugs Bunny as a girl? You ever, and, and, and think uh, she was cute or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good-looking lady. <laughs> but we get we get a good-looking bunny later. We get Lola. But, uh, yeah, Bugs kisses him. All right, okay, you guys are real. He tells them they're, they're hardship. Right. We need you to play some basketball against the Monstars. And he's like, who are these Monstars? Oh, yeah, and he sees them. And then they come through the spit-shined gym. Yeah, the gym is a mess. But, of course, Tasmanian Taz fixes it up. Well, everyone fixes it up. They yeah, spit shine it. Yeah, which was gross for me. I'm <laughs> I thought that was classic. It's classic. I'm just I'm just grossed it's out. Like if we could just stuff, spit shine yeah. the studio. Uh, well, well, Here, we'll, we'll start. No, no, no. Let's get to Fabuloso. Uh, that'd be better. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's a little better. I'm just, guys, I'm weird with that stuff. Uh, but it was funny. Yeah, and they cleaned it up. The new got scoreboards, everything. And Jordan, he sees the Monstars. You ever heard of the Dream Team? Well, we're the Scream we're Team. The Scream Team. They're like, you like that play on words we just did for you, Jordan? You like that? Yeah, it's pretty good. And Jordan's like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't play basketball anymore. I'm a, I'm a baseball, baseball player. Oh, and they get, you know how to get in Jordan's head. You talk some shit. You get him pumped up, and then he was still not into it, right? Until they hurt Tweety Bird. That was the line. Mm-hmm. That's the line. I mean, Tweety Bird was huge back then. Yeah, well, they called him Baldy. And he got, oh, Baldy was that it. started getting that, the anger rising. That like, will do it. It's like actually, it's my iconic look. But all right, anyways. But he goes, "You call Baldy?" He got angry at that, and then uh, yeah, and then they hurt Tweety Bird. He's holding little Tweety Bird in his giant hands, and I was like, "Okay, I'm in. <laughs> I'm taking you down because it's Tweety Bird." Oh, well, I'm dying, you know, with a speech impediment, and yeah, it was uh, that that got Jordan on board, and that's right. When they had to start practicing, nobody could play. Right. But there was one issue. Oh, one what was the issue? issue. Yeah. Michael Jordan cannot play basketball unless he has his college basketball shorts on. Oh, yeah. He says, I'll play, but you guys got to go up to the real world, 3D world, as they call it. You got to get me my shoes and my North Carolina shorts. Yeah. Which I heard he used to wear them under his game shorts. Every game. Every game, yeah. And he washed them. He said, yeah, and he washed them. I'm still, I'm just impressed that that dude can still fit in his college shorts. Well, he was in top shape then. True. In 96. He was still NBA. But still. Yeah. I mean, hey, uh, yeah, he, he looked good. I mean, that, that's NBA profession. Oh, there's a shirtless... Shot at it. The gray sweatpants. Jeff did pause it. I did pause it. And I go, Josh, can you please leave the room? <laughs> and yeah. I left the room. Yeah, this was this was prime Jordan. This is Jordan. I mean, he was still in game shape. And uh, yeah, especially in those 80s when he played uh, college. Those were little tiny ones, too. But yeah, they bring his shoes. They bring the Jordans. They go to his house. His kids see him. And uh, see, oh, the Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck break in the Jordans' house before ring cameras. Yeah. <laughs> and there's just hilarity and so lucky there's no ring cameras yeah. <laughs> they're making noise the kids wake up and see it and, mm-hmm. um, and they go you're gonna fuck Scotty Pippen's wife one day but until then keep your mouth shut and let me get some of these shorts let me get these shorts me see, yeah, basically we're stealing shit <laughs> we're stealing shorts from your dog thank you for helping us uh, take these shorts that your, go- your dog was guarding yeah yeah the dog's name was Charles yeah bulldog named Charles but Charles Barkley I love when uh, Oh, I love when uh, people give animal human names. I love it, yes. And it was one of the characters' names. Charles. I had a friend that their dog was named Randy. Randy? And it, was just, it just made so much sense. It was definitely a Randy dog. Anyways. Yeah, no, good point. Charles was a good protector, and then the kids were like, get away, Charles. Yep. Get Char- away. Get away. And they saved uh, Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. And, right. Um, dog just walks away so confused. Yes, yeah. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Next time I'm going to let that murder just... 
eat you kids. Oh, I know. It's like this is a uh, member an OJ stuff guy. He tried getting recovering his memorabilia. He went to jail for all that. I wonder what Jordan would do. Be like, where's my damn shoes? Right. But uh, where's my damn shorts? My damn shorts. <laughs> but uh, oh yes, the NBA players whose talent was taken: Charles Barkley, Larry Johnson, Patrick Ewing, Sean Bradley. Uh, it's a national crisis. They're going to the hospital. Uh, Oh, right. They're, so hold they, on one second. Yeah. They get the shorts. They yeah. make it down to Looney Tuneville. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the real world, these NBA stars are having a national crisis. Exactly. Yes. It's, uh, they're shutting down the NBA because there's that, that's a health issue. This is before COVID, kids. And um, Charles Barkley goes to a, in the ghetto uh, and starts seeing these girls playing basketball. Full. Girls play basketball, but like I, I never seen like 10 at once. On the playground, it was definitely not Phoenix. No, it was not Phoenix, and and they're like, "Hey, you're Charles Barkley," and and they're swatting him. He can't dribble. Well, still... he goes, "Can I play?" Yeah, he has to play. Yeah, and then they're like, "Yeah, of course." Yeah, couple plays go down, and he gets the ball stolen, and then this girl freaking blocks his shot. Yes, that she's like, "You ain't Charles Barkley." Yeah, yeah, you just a uh, looking like that wanna be like him. Oh yeah, and he's sad. Like, oh man. So like you want to be somewhere, be gone. Yes. And I'm just like, this is like, other than the Mighty Ducks, this is the first time as a kid I've ever seen anyone talk shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and knowing Barkley, I'm sure he'd be like, shut up, bitch. And then, yeah, but no, he kept his cool. Children's movie. Yeah, Cartoon children's movie. movie children's Cartoon movie. movie. Yes. Cartoon movie. Cartoon movie. So he's like, okay, he kept it. Yeah, but uh, they're all going to sports psych- shrinks. And my favorite scene, Patrick Ewing at the shrink, uh, because he says, yeah, you can't, I'm having trouble performing. He goes, other than basketball, are you having trouble performing in other places? And he goes, what hell the hell? No. Hell no, man. What are you talking about? Yeah, don't do that, Patrick Ewing. No, because he would go to the gold club. Yeah, he would party. And still perform. Yeah, as long as your dick works. And, you know, you still got, you get, yeah, you show off that Knicks jersey. All uh, right, but yes, he, uh, so we get a little sexual humor there. And more sexual humor comes in because then we go back to Toonville and they need some players. And who comes in? She's controversial in the second Space Jam. Lola, with yeah. all her curves, yes. So they, because uh, that would make young women feel insecure. She's got curves, and she knows how to play basketball. Yes, and she was showing them off, walking in that little. She had that little, you know, little swag to her when she was walking, right? Like someone that knows how to play basketball. Yeah, basketball, but also she was trying to turn on bugs. Oh yeah, well they play that music behind her entrance. Yeah, which is like slow jazz kind of. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, sexualizing her up like <laughs> yeah. It's like oh hey, and then yeah, you see oh, bugs. Wow, yes, wow. and bugs. You know, hard eyes, hard size. He's oh, oh, ears tied up, and uh, yeah, she. And what do you call her, babe? He called her something. She goes don't doll, call, doll. Yeah, doll. And then she scolded him one on one. Took him to the hoop, and he goes, "Don't call me doll." And she's like, "I'm on the team now." Yeah, and, and they're in. Jordan's in. Goes, what do you say? That girl can play. So. Yeah, Jordan's in. He's in there. It's uh, it's she's not Scott Burrell, so he'll take it. And um, so the tunes they got their team. They got their team. They're ready to play, big time, crowded arena. We got everybody there. We got uh, oh, Granny, Granny's there. Everyone in Toonsville. 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 Oh, but the bet one of my part, I get chills, is when they're in the locker room. They're getting the uniforms, the Toon Squad uniforms, the original Toon Squad uniform, white jersey with the Looney Tune logo. Iconic. Iconic. It, it brought, it's like, oh, and Jordan putting that on, that's badass. So they got He's putting on the original Space Jam Ooh. 11s. Oh, oh, oh yeah, he put on the shoes. Guys, if you if you like 90s basketball. Iconic. I, I got the nerd in me came out. I was like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, wow. The shoes, the unis, it was all great. And they get in there, and yeah, uh, well, DeVito's character's there. He's in his throne with a cigar. And then uh, we got Monstars. Oh, we got a battle here. And I think, and this game was very violent because the refereeing was horrible. There was, this was like street ball to the max. Yes. Uh, well, No here, fouls whatsoever. Well, the problem is uh, the referee was Marvin the Martian. So he's never played basketball. Well, he's like two, he's small. He's like two inches tall. Hey guys, we're going to go on there. You know, it's like this. And he's cute. It's Marvin the Martian. He's doing the tip off with Jordan and the Monstars. So, yeah, referee, he probably didn't get a good view on a lot of these calls. I'm just saying when you slam in an airplane into people, it's the foul. Right. And, you know, this was strictly street street rules, and there was no steroid policy. No, no, no. I mean, if you saw the juice, they were on the juice, the Monstars. They were on the juice. Yeah, they stole some Hall of Fame Dream Teamer 
uh, juice there. They got their talent, and yeah, there's all they're beating people up. They're uh, and like I said, Jordan's the only real player. I mean, I think I think uh, Lola had a, g- a couple good moves, but Jordan's their only good player. They're getting killed. They scored. What was it? The final score was like seventy-eight. Oh, the halftime score. It was like I think they barely had ten points, but the Monstars had. I mean, they're they were killing sixty-six. Them. Yeah, sixty-six. Yeah, sixty-six to twenty or some pretty hard, t- tough deficit going into the half. It was not looking good, even with Jordan. And uh, Jordan was angry, but not true Jordan angry, not last dance Jordan angry. He was just happily competitive. He's like, "Come on, guys, we could do it." You know, like I said, he's it's Michael Jordan. He's not Sir Lawrence Olivier. So <laughs> you're gonna get the best. It out was of the that. wish version of his competitiveness. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Believe me, MJ. What the fuck? Get your ass out there, Scott Burrell. Come on, Daffy Duck. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he'd be all on his shit. Oh yeah, uh, he would not put up with Elmer Fudd. And well, we talked about the curves of Lola. We she had, we showed her breasts in that jersey. You know whose breasts were showing too, but nobody complains. Is Granny's? She was wearing a uniform. Did you see hers were extra saggy? Were they? Yes, they were oh extra saggy. Oh my god, I didn't catch that. No, yeah. I wasn't looking. But nobody complained <laughs> about that, right? Yeah, you woke culture. Uh, cause they're like Lola, you sexualize her. You make her. Um, It'll make young women feel insecure. You don't think I felt insecure seeing Jordan like with no body fat? <laughs> I eat a Big Mac. Yeah, eat a Big Mac, like a perfect. Because when he puts on his uniform, we see a six pack. I, I, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm gay, but I'm just saying. Hey, I mean, look, made me insecure. I'm fine. <laughs> All right, look. Now I'm doing a podcast about it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we go into halftime. Jordan gives the motivation speech, but Bugs helps out too. Once again, Bugs Bunny is witty. He comes in, he pulls up his water bottle and, and tapes a little yellow sticky note on it. Mike's secret stuff. Just fills it up with water and goes, Mike, tell him about this, Mike. I can't do it, Bugs Bunny. Uh, hey. When they drink it, they they take the placebo effect in full effect, and now they think they are a superstar like Michael Jordan. Total game changer, total mindset change. It's a big probably like lesson of the movie is yeah. you got to think. You get, if you want to be a winner, you got to think like a winner. They go out to the second half, and they start winning. Oh, it turns around. Winning. This, they don't need Phil Jackson. They need Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny was better than Phil Jackson. I'm telling mm. you right now. Yes, yeah, the secret. Was it secret stuff? Yep. And hey, Mike's got, secret stuff. Mike's secret stuff. And it's funny. You take a sip out of it, uh, and Bugs Bunny had uh, human uh, muscles. So everybody's Daffy Ducks ready. Talk about Tweety. growth hormone. Oh, yeah. We're already uh, out there um, in the mind. And they're, hey. They're playing on. They're laying on. They they're fighting back this time. The the Toon Squad because this is the thing. They they got airplanes. They're flying airplanes into the players. Uh, uh, they had uh, explosive devices connected to the hoop. I mean, we're, they're we're, doing anything to win. Oh yeah, they were fucking anything around. They're doing like look, Marvin the Martian ain't calling anything. So what? Nothing. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna no do technical fouls. Nothing. No. no, I'll put a terrorist attack. Uh, in the whole building, right? Uh, but yeah. it does wear on the Toon Squad. It does. They got. They were not prepared by the third quarter. Yeah, they are worn out, and they need a replacement. Who oh, well, walks in? Oh yeah, but the, before we tell that part, when the Toon Squad is uh, beat up pretty bad, right? One of the funniest things that still cracks me up. Uh, we see uh, everybody's all beat up with crutches and bleeding or whatever, but then we see an iron lung. With Tweety Bird inside the iron lung. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which is hilarious. Now, I know some people are getting offended. Like, an iron lung? My grandfather's sister died of polio. It's funny because it's a little fucking bird and a giant <laughs> iron lung. And fuck your grandma's sister. That was a long time ago. You never met her. Anyways, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got a point. I'm an angry man. Okay. Anyways, I'm trying to have fun. But yes, they, they need a player. Oh, yeah. They only have four players. Oh, and there's 10 seconds left in the game. because we got a ball game. Because Jordan, he, Jordan ain't fucking around. We're going. we taking this shit. We're going to win. And who saves the day? Bill Murray. Bill motherfucking Murray. Bill Murray comes He's out. He's like, this is my chance. Yep. This is my chance. Does anybody need a player? Or is he said something like that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when he comes out. He's wearing Jordans. Jordans, yeah. And he's got a, well, the big red undershirt. And it looks floppy. It's funny. Yeah. It's Definitely Bill, another comedic relief. Bill Murray. And then Danny DeVito's character, when he's the alien, he goes, hey, who let Dan Aykroyd in here? Yeah. Which is funny. And it was, which is interesting because the movie was produced by Ivan Reitman, who made Ghostbusters. There we go. So it all ties in. There is got Dan Aykroyd. Hey, they're, they're both Ghostbusters. Very funny. And hey, it comes in, and we're bringing Jordan. And funny, Bill Murray has a play, and he goes, "Okay, we're on." But Jordan goes, "But we're on defense." He goes, "I don't play defense." 
<laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect Bill Murray timing. Uh, uh, yeah, so he comes up with a, he comes up with another play. Jordan's gonna get the final shot, guys. Uh, so yeah, that was funny. We get the final shot. He stretches his arm. Yeah, he okay. He, they, hey, Monstar's playing good D. Gets the half court, and we're gonna see the jump man. We're gonna see that. I go. mean, this is like the ju- ju- jump man. This is not no foul line dunk. No, this no, is the from bullshit. half court half court and it helps when you step on people when you're, he was stepping on giant monsters so he kept getting f- higher and higher i would recommend if you're going to try to dunk from half court you step on a couple people yeah. in the process and marvin w- swallowed his whistle he wasn't going to call that no he was not going to call charging i'm not going to call that what are you doing um that's a good marvin i'm proud of that that was good that was good so yeah jordan's going and hey it's cartoon world we've already had airplanes and vespa scooters fly through what's just one more stretch arm Let's do that. I'm going to stretch my arm like Stretch Armstrong. And it kept getting longer and longer. And I'm freaking out. we got two seconds. Jordan, I don't, I, can you do it? Can he's Jordan missed do it? The, he's missed the shot before. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, is, is this Jordan versus the Cavs in the 86 playoffs? I don't know. Dun, 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 dun. Ah, Jordan gets it. Spoiler. He hits the game-winning shot. He hits the game-winning shot. They win. They win. And, hey, the oh, we forgot the, the winner of the bet. Because uh, I guess this bad guy's honorable. If, <laughs> if, uh, if Looney Tunes wins, uh, Toon Squad wins, they give the talent back to the NBA players, and Jordan's not their slave. Yep. Which, uh, yeah, that's another part I want to bring up. It's kind of uncomfortable in this day and age. Uh, they're saying, hey, Jordan, if you lose, you're going to be a slave. There was one last conflict. Yes, the conflict. Uh, and they had a cartoon where... It's very uncomfortable. Like Jor- Jordan is like a slave in Moran Mountain. Chained. Yeah, a, a muscular black man chained. It was a cartoon. Uh, it still was a little uncomfortable. You're yeah. going to play one-on-one with all the guests, and you will lose, lose. every time. Yeah, black man in chains. Uh, very awkward. It's like, oh, hey, jeez. <laughs> Don't worry. We fast-forwarded it. Yeah, we did. We are like, this is wrong. We wrote a letter. We wrote a letter. We we're I, upset here on the Feel the Jokes podcast. Yeah, I was upset. Now, the Lola thing, I'm not upset at all. No, no, <laughs> she looked good. Um, but yes, Jordan wins. Uh, the t- uh, and so and the little guys gave back the talent, put it in a basketball. But here's the other thing. Yeah, they were like, we don't have to go back to Moron Mountain, do we? And they were like, no, because we're bigger than him now. Yeah, they sent. Danny DeVito on a fucking rocket ship back to Moron Mountain. Board Mount, and then well, in classic Looney Tunes when it crashes into like the moon or something, you hear a little poop. <laughs> Hilarious. And uh, but Jordan, before he got them going, he's like, "You can let, take this from this guy." And they had, and he told them, he goes, "You don't need to be big. Your secret stuff." Right. So that whole conflict smushed. Yep. Moron Mountain conflict is no longer a thing. That solution has been provided. Now we're working on Jordan going back to his family. Going back to his family, but also he has to return that talent to his friends, which is funny. I got to give my talent back to my friends. Right. But even before that, Jeff. Oh, yeah. He's got to land a spaceship in the middle of a baseball field at. Well, he's late. Five, the game is in five minutes. Five minutes, he's and this a, man knows how to make an entrance. Let me just say that. A baseball game. And Wayne Knight played the PR guy. Yes. Shows up to the middle of Birmingham Barron Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen. Michael Jordan. Yes, Michael Jordan coming. He was the so picture. happy to say it. Yes. Oh yeah, he sold that one. Yeah, he comes in a spaceship. Michael Jordan uh, on the pitcher's mound comes out. Oh, I mean, hey, I believe I can fly. Hey, his family's happy. We didn't know he was, was Michael going to make it to the baseball game. Oh, he did in a spaceship. And and in the South, when you see a spaceship, uh, now they have witnesses. It's real. Yeah, they're like, oh shit. I it's told real. you, I told you, they're real. It's freaking um, real, okay? Freaking real. But Jordan said, he, like I said, he had the, the basketball, had everybody's talent, and he had to go back. And, and in, in, a, in a shitty gymnasium, we got Michael, we got Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing. One of the most Michael Jordan lines out of the entire movie. What does he say? Oh, he gives it back to him. Uh, Before he gives it back to him. He goes, I'm going to regret this. I know I'm going to Re- regret this. But here's the thing. Jordan kicked all their asses when they had the talent back in the playoffs. And I'm a Suns fan. I was pissed about the 93 finals. But so. he's always still thinking, like, if I get back into basketball and, and they're still here, I, I, yep. it would probably be better if they didn't have their talent. Yep. They did it. But they're like, oh, man, goes like, here's your talent. Well, what you had of it anyways. Oh, come on, Michael. <laughs> they all get mad. They touch the basketball. 
They're all dunking again. We got it. Larry's got it. Grandmama's back. The NBA is back, baby. They don't know what happened. They don't know why they're back. They're not asking any questions. It's not illegal. It's it's not a thing anymore. Yeah. I, I had a seizure and I lost all my talent. What's going on here? No, no, it's okay. We'll just touch the basketball. Charles Barkley was legit on the spectrum for a good month. A good month, yes. And, and they're all like, oh, okay, this is fine. We'll take it. And they go, hey, you want to play three on three? No, I don't play basketball anymore. Right. And, and then, then they get in his head. And they just, if somebody was a Barkley, uh, oh, man, you don't want to play anymore anyway. Or something. It's not he had said something. We paid attention. I didn't, apparently. Uh, but he got in Jordan's head. You challenge him. Like, Long story short. He got in Jordan's head. He yep. challenged him. Yeah, and he, then? Come back. Your Chicago Bulls. Yep. Ma- ma- Michael Jordan. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Slam, jam, bum, 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 bum. Good. That was pretty good. Damn. And not only do we get Michael Jordan, we get 45 Michael Jordan when he's come back. When he, uh, yeah, wore number 45. Because 46 was taken. Uh, 23. Well, 23 times two. Ah, uh, yes, but 45 was his baseball number. I'm just joking. Oh, feel the jokes, and I'm, uh, I'm like, Booyah! I totally messed up there. Okay, but yes, because uh, 23 at the time was retired because of Jordan. Mm. So he had to wear 45, and then he said, fuck it, and changed it to 23 again. Did he? Uh, I think, yeah, I think he got fined for it, too, because that playoffs, because he changed his number in the middle of the playoffs, because he's wearing 45. He's like, yeah, fuck it, I'm putting on 23 again. And that's He's fine. like, this baseball number really fucked me over. Yeah, yeah, he didn't <laughs> like baseball. But, but let me tell you, so those 45 jerseys, people were sporting those for a while. Those are pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, yeah, he uh, he came back. They lost second round of the, the, the Magic, I believe. I think the Magic went to the finals that year. Where am I going? Anyways, uh, my, see, I love 90s NBA. Here we go, folks. And that was Space Jam. Space Jam. One. Space Jam 1, and we had... All the great people. Like we were talking about, Pepe Le Pew made a little appearance. No raping. He just, uh, I think he stunk up the basketball or something. Uh, and he uh, wasn't the rapey, stinky Frenchman like they portrayed in the 40s. Thank God. Thank God. And uh, Speedy Gonzalez was in it. Didn't have much of a part. Little, <laughs> little he had parts. a cameo. He had a cameo. He had a little part because he's little. It's funny. Um, you ever, well, I love Speedy Gonzalez. Uh, do you remember he had a, uh, his cousin who was really slow? No. Yeah, because I, I told you, you know, hey, Speedy. And he walks real slow, talks slow. Really? He, say, because one was fast, one was slow. Uh, he was not in it. I wish he was. But Granny had giant, massive. Does this, this movie definitely still holds up to the test of time? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's better than the uh, second one. I totally give it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's Michael Jordan. Brilliant writing. Brilliant writing. I think Looney Tunes. Brilliant like, product placement. Yes, because Jordan needed that cash. And brilliant conflicts. Yes, several great conflicts. And it's off to Space Jam. I haven't watched this movie in literally 15 years. God, I probably saw it when it came out on video, so that was 25, 26, more Did than Did you that. really have to up me on that, Jeff? You really got to beat me on that? Well, I mean, it's not a, blame me, I don't get a I mean, it was probably it. like 30 years. <laughs> no, I'm going back to Moran Mountain. Believe me, I get no victory <laughs> on that. <laughs> believe me. Uh, I'm going back to Moran Mountain. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, believe me, I'm fucked. But... Uh, no, it was good, and I love. I would it. recommend this movie to people that have seen it and people that have not seen it. Yeah, even as an adult, show it with your kids. They're like kids, adults, grandparents. Yeah. Fuck it. If you got someone in the womb, make make sure they see it. And they're like, "Well, I like LeBron now." No, no, MJ. And I used LeBron to hate LeBron. Who? Yeah, LeBron. Who? Because I cannot wait to watch Space Jam two and do a comparison. We need to do that. Yes, we'll do that next one. Me and Josh will do that next time. So make sure you like, follow, and subscribe, and rate us on. Apple and Spotify hit that five stars. And you know what? Do us a favor. If you liked Space Jam, just leave in the comments your favorite part about Space Jam. That's yeah. all we ask. Who was your favorite NBA player? Anything about Space Jam? What was your favorite part about Space Jam? If you could have picked another NBA player to have their talents uh, stolen, who would it be? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Who would it be? Who would it be? Um, who would it be? Jason Kidd. Oh, that! Oh, I probably would have done that. Uh, it definitely would not have been Sean Bradley. Uh, <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal, like we were saying. Oh, yeah, Shaq or Alonzo Mourning. Yep. That was 90s NBA. I want a big man. No Pippen. Well, we know that. There's some issues that. later. But, yes, thank you, Joshua James Boyer, the producer, comedian. Hot takes. Hot takes, yes. And he is the – who's the leader of Toon? You're the Bugs Bunny. You're the Toon. You're the leader of Toon Town. I think it was Toon <laughs> Jeff's our Michael Jordan. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I'm the, well, I'm, I'm – Uh, Wizards, Michael Jordan. All right, guys. Thank you for watching Field of Jokes. See you next time.